John is a new convert to religion who would like to talk about his beliefs. Uh, John, can you hear us? Yes, I can. How's it going? Good morning. Welcome, Hello, John. How are you? Thank you for calling in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so you said you wanted to, you were a recent convert and you want to talk about what your beliefs, what did you convert from and to? So I, I actually did not use the word recent convert myself, although that is a you know, that's a fairly good representation of me. I just okay. growing up did not have a huge amount of religious influence in my life. Like I'm a student. I've spent most of my life just kind of learning about science, learning about, you know, just trying to study the world in a way that's not religious, that's founded in reason, founded in logic. And I definitely don't want to lose sight of that. But through the past few years, I've had some deeply profound experiences that have affected me greatly, that I found religion through. And I've talked to a lot of my friends who are actually big fans of your show. I, I don't know if any of them are watching now, but shout out to them. But Yeah, shout out to John's friends. And understandably... <laughs> You know, in a similar vein as your last call, they've had some concerns about my beliefs as they've seen me take on my beliefs. And part of what I'm trying to do as I get those beliefs and as I immerse myself in those beliefs voluntarily is to just try to maintain accountability and try to hold myself to a standard where I can still defend my beliefs to atheists. And I can still walk away from the conversation believing that I've put forward a logical argument. When you say you've had profound experiences... Do they, do they, are they profound when you describe them to other people or are they just profound to you? Yes, to the extent that a lot of the time people don't believe me and a lot of, the, a lot of what I found God through and what I found God for has just been getting through these experiences, not being able to talk about them, not being able to share them with people around me who'd probably be capable of helping me with them, but who just don't care, who just like, because of who I am, will not help me. And I've had to just, you know, fix shit on my own. And God has helped me do that. Dare I ask if you could describe these profound experiences for us? That was going to be my next question to you. I would, one thing I, I am hesitant about is I, at first, I don't want to start off by getting too too much into my own personal lives because I do think that it impacts well, my credibility. In, yeah, I'm granted, thinking, but you've called in and you've said, you, you've, you know, you've, you've pitched us on this on the, the basis problems that you started off not religious and you've become religious based on profound experiences. So right. please don't go all coy on us now and not tell us what the profound experiences are because I, that yeah, gets us nowhere. Because the, the point is that the those arguments are... Oh, I'm, John? My experience... John, just a second. It's fine. Um, the re I, I, I want to make this clear. We're not trying to force you to tell a story you don't want to tell us, but you said that the reason you converted was because of these profound experiences, not necessarily because well, of logical I arguments, right? So if the logical arguments that, that you have now are not the reason you initially converted, then that was at least at some point that probably wasn't very convincing to you. So we want to know what did convince you. Exactly. And I'm not trying to be dishonest here at all. I will absolutely answer any of your questions, describe my experiences as honestly as I can. I would just like to just going into it, make it very clear that I'm not trying to claim that my, my experiences themselves are what convinced me of God. I don't think that any of you would be convinced if I told you that, all right, my life experience has convinced me of the reality of God, because that's not a convincing argument. All I'm saying well, is that I mean, I've personal experience. Very privileged mindset where I haven't had to think about things like that. But then, because of some experiences, because of some circumstances that surrounded me, I had to, I, you know, I've had to learn to think differently. And in learning how to think differently, I've exposed myself to many, many, many new ideas. And God is one of the ones I'm holding on to. And I'm trying to hold on to it in a way that still is coherent and still is defensible, even independent of my experiences. Even okay, so tell me if even if you didn't know who I was, John, I believe that my argument still holds true. But I will talk to you. John, tell me, tell me if this is accurate. You did not convert because of your experiences directly. It isn't like a one a, a to B, but you've had experiences that made you think about things differently. And when you started thinking about things differently, 
uh, God seemed like more plausible or religion seemed more helpful or something along those lines. Is, am I following you? Exactly. Religion has been the most healthy way to organize my thoughts and achieve great things. And I believe that's why religion is so powerful, and that's why I think it sticks around. It's always going to stick around. Because it's okay. a way for people who are similar to me and have been in probably worse circumstances than me to achieve greater things than I've ever been able to. And that's what God is. That's power. That's like the most powerful thing in the world. Is, uh, are we any closer to hearing what the experiences are? I'm, I'm yeah. waiting with bated yeah, breath here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I didn't mean to I didn't mean to mislead you. I just didn't, you know. It's, it's for you're me, you're all right. We've just got we have uh, an hour and a half and quite a few callers, so we kind of yeah, want to yeah, be let's not direct. Let's not diddle. Yeah, I agree. So I'm a I'm a survivor of child abuse and child neglect, which I'm sorry yeah, to hear a lot that of people are these days. But you know, I no don't don't be sorry. It's just sort of been what I've had to do through my life throughout my whole life. And for a while, I was actually doing very well with it. Despite being in a situation that wasn't great, I was very successful and I was able to, you know, fix things to the greatest extent that I had, that I could. And I don't want to misrepresent things either. I, you know, I had a lot of help along the way. I wasn't like the worst person. I didn't have like the worst situation ever. But a few years ago, things just got pretty hard for me. I went from, you know, I was in high school at the time working just like close to minimum wage jobs and I started losing hours. I lost one of my jobs that I'd been relying on for, you know, really consistent hours that had been great to me for a long time. I quit to pursue another job and then that job was great, but I just wasn't getting the hours that I could rely upon. And at that point, my main expense was food. So when I had to start cutting back on expenses, I had to start cutting back on food. Uh, John, can we summarize this part of the story with you went through some financial hardships? Yeah, I ran out of food at some point and it was bad. And I had to like go to school and beg for food and stuff. And everybody's convinced that I'm crazy because of that. And I probably am crazy, but God told me to get it through. I don't know. Uh, in what way did you feel that God helped you get through it? I feel like I've had to get through it and God's helped me find the strength within myself to do it. And not only to do it, not only to survive, to thrive in a way that most people can't say that they have, even if they've been given food. Well, if the strength was in you, where does God come into it? The strength is not within me. The strength is something that I can find within myself if I channel the right energy from the universe. I believe well, what I am is not... You know, what I am I, is a box that's receptive to energies that's far higher, you know, that are far higher than me. Like, I'm living in space time, but I'm being operated on by energies that go far, okay. far beyond that. John, far, far beyond real, that. real quick, I'm going to interject here because you feel that you could not have gotten that strength from yourself. Is that right? I might have been able to, but even if I could, it would have been just like a... It would have taken more work to get less strength for myself than God was able to give me. How, how do you know that? If you I don't think it's impossible that that could have been done by yourself, how do you know that a God factored into it? And before you answer that, let me say, I've also been through some really tough times. And during those tough times, I was convinced that I was directly opposed to God the whole time. And I still made it through. Uh, uh, I, not only did I never ask God for help, I considered myself an enemy of God the whole time because I thought that I was being disobedient and I thought that I was damned. I thought that I was not going to make it because I was in opposition to God's will for me. And I still came out the other side, not only fine, but thriving. Like my worst problem right now is a toothache. <laughs> so why do you think that this could that this couldn't have come from you why do you think that it had to be a god why why is a god necessary in this when people all the time get through really rough stuff and that's not to downplay your experiences at all i fully acknowledge that it would sound that sounds like a very very rough time why did a God have to be involved when people get through rough times without a God all the time? Well, to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't say that God has been with me the entire time. And I've spent a lot of my, a lot of my life in that exact same mindset that you've described. I've, described. I've literally prayed to God 
feeling like I'm Satan, praying to him for rescue, thinking that without him, I have no strength. And I think that, you know, and I wouldn't put many of the choices that I've made, even trying to improve my situation on God, because I don't think that they all are. I've had many, many plans and many of them haven't worked. But the ones that have worked have, in my opinion, been rooted in God. And they've come to me when I put myself in a mindset where I'm receptive to God. So I wouldn't say that it's impossible to do any of the things that I've done without God. I think that I've had to do, you know, I think that I've had to do them without God the whole time to an extent. And I think that everybody around me, everybody in the world is probably always dealing with harder things without God themselves. I'm not saying that that's hard for me to wrap my brain around, but what makes religion profound to me and the reason that I'm so convinced of it, the reason that I'm so, that it's made such an impact on my life is that I believe that with God, with God is capable of amplifying the strength that you have within yourself anyway. Even if you're capable of maybe doing the things that you need to do, it's going to require so much more struggle to do all those things on your own. God's capable of doing that with less effort. When you're capable of doing certain things. That sounds like God is depression medication. Effort, that frees up other effort for you to take care of the people around you. So they don't have can to I, do many of those things for them. Can I give you my thoughts, John? Having forward. John, can I just give you my thoughts having listened to all of this? Of I, I don't know. I don't know what your expectations were as to how this conversation would go when you called in. Specific to discuss, but I, I apologize. Well, we've discussed a lot already. We have listened to a lot, and um, I just want to give you my thoughts. Fair enough. So you, as Rudy pointed out, you've been through a lot. You've been through, uh, it sounds like, a traumatizing experience, and we would never wish to downplay that. Um, but if if you your aim, if back any back. part of your aim in calling Talk Heathen was to persuade us, that God is real or that religion is the way of navigating these issues. I'm sorry, you just haven't been convincing. And and here's my main issue here. Whenever it boils down to, well, I've had these personal experiences. I've been through hardship. Uh, just when I thought I didn't have any energy left, hey, I got this massive gust of energy. I got replenished and I was able to carry on and I could never have carried on if it was in my own energy. I just keep thinking in the back of my mind, the Holocaust, 6 million Jews died in the Holocaust, coronavirus, 3.7 million people have died in the coronavirus. And where was God for them? Where was God for literally millions of people who have died, whether through war or through disease? I, I really shudder when I look back when I was to when I was religious and I used to fantasize about God intervening in my life, in my insignificant life, in some insignificant way to make just my life just that little bit better while all of this death and misery was being allowed to continue. A God that folds his arms through the Holocaust is not a God I'm interested in worshipping. So if, if because of the trauma that you've had in your life, the idea of believing in a God gives you comfort, fantastic. Glad it works for you. But if your aim was to convince us or persuade us, in the large amount of time we've afforded you, I'm really sad to say it just hasn't worked. Yeah. and I think that's fair enough. I appreciate your time. I, the one thing I would like to say, and you know, I'm not trying to drag this out any longer than it is, was that was specifically why I didn't want to spend too much time talking about my own experiences. I did mention that at the beginning of our conversation. I had, you know, I crafted what I believed would have been a convincing argument that was rooted in science that I'm still willing to make. But you've given me plenty of time, and I very much appreciate your time. I'm not trying Thank to you. Convince. Well, if you, you want to call back with that argument some other time, you are absolutely welcome to do so, John. I very uh, well thank might. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye. <sighs> Yeah, uh, John's version of God kind of sounds like the way that my depression medication works. Like, I know that I can do all that stuff, but I need does, a little does boost your depression to help me to uh, get through come, it. Does your medication come with strings attached so that you have to live by all sorts of rules if you want to I mean, I gotta pay from... for it. That's a string. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and... Yeah, we didn't even really get to get into what his God concept was, uh which I also found interesting because 
uh, it didn't seem to, at least the way he was describing it, it didn't seem to matter very specific. Like the specifics of the god didn't seem to necessarily have to factor in. Um, yeah, I, I feel bad. I mean, if you're going to base it on personal experience, and I appreciate he said that he wasn't basing it on personal experience, but he did sort of lead with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's kind know. of hard to take that back after you've already. It's kind of best to that. lead to lead with the scientific stuff, really, yeah. and and he didn't. So maybe if if he does call back, he can lead with that. Yeah. yeah. But but as you know, as we pointed out, uh, the scientific arguments and whatever isn't what initially convinced him clearly. Exactly. So that doesn't really make even though it might be stronger as an argument for his own personal experience, it doesn't really make sense as a place to start. 